Hi everyone, happy November, and we're excited to start today on the Christmas Sparkle Arrangement. So this arrangement will be uh, focused on using obviously Christmas flowers, but whereas last time in the Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, we did more traditional flowers like the hellebore and some of those other flowers we associate with Christmas time and obviously evergreens, we are going to have three flowers in this arrangement which come from bulbs, which are used a lot in decorating um, as in a pot and grown from bulbs, or obviously used as a cut flower at Christmas time. That is the amaryllis, and we're going to be doing a beautiful red amaryllis. Um, then we're going to be working on the French tulips, so white French tulips, and also paper whites, which is part of um, Narcissus family, and obviously have beautiful fragrance. So these are flowers you often see used in floral arrangements at Christmas time, where as I said, a lot of people give amaryllis bulbs, or obviously especially paper white bulbs, and force them so they're in flower during the Christmas time. So let's get started. So this is the red amaryllis. Now obviously amaryllis come in lots of different colors. I remember my grandmother used to love uh, one uh, with sort of pinky colored one, but there obviously are lots of varieties, white, but red is obviously an iconic color we use towards the uh, Christmas time. So anyway, you can see that there obviously are lots of slight variations in the coloring and some uh, amaryllis can be a little darker. We're gonna be doing a red with a sort of this darker stripe on it. Uh, some can be frilly, um, some can be quite straight. And also the sepals and petals, which is obviously the inside and outside part. Sometimes they're made with the same size uh, cutter, or in this case, template, or obviously can be uh, thinner and wider ones, okay? So there are lots of variations. Now, of course, amaryllis comes from a bulb. Um, and so in this and second part, we're going to be making the flower. We're gonna do a sort of more of a closed up flower and more of an open flower. And we're also gonna do a bud. And obviously traditionally, you know, when amaryllis grow, they have this long stem. Uh, so when we come in part two to talk about finishing touches, you could of course put it on a longer stem and then you could actually even make a sort of the top of the bulb and put it in a pot or obviously use that in a tall uh, vase or arrange a container uh, to arrange that. But we're gonna do a fairly compact, low arrangement, more sort of European style in a uh, four inch or 10 centimeter cube uh, container. And uh, we're going to talk about options as well, uh, closer to the time where we obviously can use, uh, I'm going to use silver as a sort of the bling um, sort of sparkle element, or you can also use gold, or you can also do this uh, in black or other contemporary colors as well. And, uh, but anyway, so amaryllis is a very nice for a more modern arrangement or obviously traditional as an alternative to say a poinsettia. And this would be very stunning on say, for example, a Christmas wedding as well. And uh, so you can see, you know, this one, you can see that obviously this one is a little narrower and these are a little bit wider. All right, uh, but you have the uh, pistol, um, the stigma. All right, so this is the pistol, very much like a lily, but obviously these are actually curved. And uh, so let's get started. This is the center of the amaryllis. And as I said, we're going to be making two flowers. So your instruction says times two flowers. And it's just when we make the stamens and the pistol and sigma, that will be exactly the same for both flowers. When we come on to the actual petal part, we're going to be making one a little bit more closed up and one a little bit more open. So you have also the natural progression of the flower. Now, when we are making this in your checklist, it calls for four um, 30 gauge white wires, all right? I'm gonna show you just one, uh, one set. So I'm, you've obviously you'd have four wires. I'm gonna show you obviously um, one set. So I've already made one set of flower stamens and also the pistol and stigma, all right? So I'm gonna show you just one of these, but you're repeating this, obviously you're making two sets for the centers. Now we're going to use 30 gauge white wire. We're going to cover this because the reason we're covering it because we're going to dust this in the second uh, part where we're gonna be dusting this sort of a greeny color, a red, and then also a sort of a, a ruby color, a little bit of green. By using this, just like when we do hydrangeas, we need to cover this with tape. Although this is a white wire, if you can't try to dust the paper, it doesn't really take color very well. So we're gonna take a quarter width white floral tape. All right, so with your quarter width floral tape, you're going to cover the wires. All right, so you're gonna do each wire individually. So we're gonna take the wire and you can just start a little bit past the end there and just go around with your fingers. All right, remember, keep tension on the tape. All right, and you wanna get this nice and taut so you get the nice covering but you're just gonna cover down from top to bottom on the four wires, okay? 
Now once you've covered the, the four wires, we're going to then follow the instructions. We're going to cut the ends, just trim the ends, all right? So what I do is obviously take your four wires, you can hold them together. And then using some either wire cutters or obviously scissors, kitchen scissors, I'm just gonna cut the very ends off because when you start the floral tape, sometimes you get a little lump of floral tape. All right, so just, and then we're gonna cut the wires into thirds approximately, all right? So just cut those into thirds, which means you'll have 12 wires. Remember, I'm showing you just the components of one of the two amaryllis. Once we've got that, we're gonna make a four millimeter hook on the end of the wire and bend halfway down the hook to make a T-hook. All right, so just, um, I'm gonna show you on a larger scale what we're gonna do, all right, first. Now we have done this before and in obviously um, the uh, book number two for the lilies, this is a technique I use the same as the lilies. So what you're gonna do on the end of the wire, you will make a four millimeter hook. I'm showing you this much larger. All right, so you're gonna fold that over, so you're gonna make a hook, but this is only gonna be four millimeters long, all right? And then what you do is you hold the hook halfway down all right, so you hold the hook halfway down and you pull the wire down like this. So this is what I call a T-hook, all right? And so we use this for sort of certain stamens and certain flower uh, centers and things as well, all right? Also like orchids as well, when we do the dendrobium orchids, we use this technique for the bud, all right? So that is the basic technique. So, you know, make a four millimeter hook, then halfway down the length of the hook, just bend it at a right angle. So you get this T intersection, all right? This is what I refer to as a T hook. All right, now when we actually do that, in reality, we're going to make a little tiny hook. Now we're only gonna do this four millimeters long, all right? So it wants to be four millimeters on your, here, so quite, quite small. Okay, so four millimeters, gonna fold that over. All right, just sort of, just the first one, make sure you're correct, all right? So it's a little less than five millimeters, so four, four millimeters uh, long. And then you're going to take your, so you sort of squash that and then take your ply, your tweezers, all right? I use tweezers here, not pliers, because they're too wide. And you sort of hold halfway down. So you see where we actually bend it will be approximately half the length of the hook. So you can see you have a little mini version there, all right? So you're just going to do that. So you're just gonna make your little hooks. All right, and you're just gonna make this little T shape on the end of them. All right, so you're just gonna continue. So if you make it a little bit small, just regroup that. And just remember, you want to sort of squash it, and then you just sort of hold halfway down the hook so you get this T shape on the end of the wire, okay? So the important thing here is just uh, to obviously get that small. And if you, you know, sometimes when we do this technique, we mark the wire, it's usually not necessary, but just want to make sure it's less than five millimeters long. Okay, and then so obviously I'm just showing you six, but you do that on all 12 wires. All right, so we've got the, the wires ready. So you've got your little T hooks on the end of them. So next step is going to be to take the paste. Now in your um, checklist, it has a number six small of lemon yellow and uh, it has on your guide use a yellow number seven sample for shade. So on your, um, on your uh, measuring mold, which is this obviously is air drying clay, that's approximately the shade of yellow. That means we don't, you don't want it to a too pale, but also not too dark, all right? So we're gonna, just gonna use that as a sort of a, a gauge. So when you're doing this obviously in sugar, you're going to take some, either pre-colored yellow paste and add it to white, or you're going to add a little bit of yellow gel color, but that's approximately the sort of the shade of yellow we want, all right? So that sort of gives you an idea. And also in air drying clay, use a number six. So there, what you could actually do is if you wanted to, you could use obviously the formula, um, so your number seven, uh, sub number seven color there, but you use a, um, you could of course use a number one white, and then you could use obviously a number seven yellow will give you that color, or just add a little bit of yellow if you don't want to mix up a whole batch to get to your about on that sort of approximate color, all right? Now, some amaryllis have paler stamens, some have darker stamens, but that's just a sort of almost like the color match we're looking for. So we have a number, um, this is a number six small, all right? So it wants to just be, uh, so this just goes through the hole, all right? Just, 
just fits through the, the hole. There we go. All right. And then we're going to, so just condition the paste a little bit. And then we're going to, uh, now we're going to roll into a sausage and cut into 12 pieces. All right. Now remember, this is just, a, this actual pieces we're making are number two small. But as I said, this is just a quicker way of making it. All right. So you're going to roll this into a sausage. Now remember, you can use your flexi scraper to enable you to get an even sausage there. All right. So you're just going to roll that. And just make sure your paste feels nice and soft and don't put too much pressure on here. But this technique of when you roll with the flexi scraper, this will just help to, as I said, you just do this. And usually working on like a little silicone mat, like a sill pad or baking mat, will get a little bit of traction on here, okay? All right, so you're just gonna just roll that. There we go. Just make sure that the ends are square. Usually I would use a, a knife with a thinner blade, like a mini palette knife or like an artist palette knife. I'm gonna cut this into quarters. All right, and then each quarter you'll cut into three. All right, so you're gonna cut this. So this is enough for both both amaryllises because you need six stamens per flower. So obviously I'm only going to show you six of these. All right. And then you're going to put those underneath a little pot. Again, it's going to use a little silicone pot and just put them under the little pot there. All right. Now we're going to use, uh, what we're actually going to use is the lily, um, Flower Pro Lily, all right, so this is our Flower Pro Lily. Now this is obviously we've used uh, for making lilies. And of course with the lily mold, there are vertical stamens and horizontal stamens. So these are like T stamens, which I showed obviously on one of the lily varieties uh, in book two and on the videos. So we're using a smaller one that's like the canoe shape, all right, like the sort of kayak shape here. And uh, so we're gonna use that. Now we're going to take, um, so we're gonna take a, Roll into a six millimeter quarter inch cigar shape. All right, so you're gonna take your piece of paste here. Now, all I do is I roll this on my finger and I'm gonna roll it into like a little cigar shape. So I'm putting pressure on one end and the other end. So you see it's like a little cigar shape, all right? And that wants to be approximately about a quarter of an inch in length, all right? So that's gonna be um, approximately six millimeters a quarter of an inch, all right, in length, all right? Just doesn't wanna to be too, too long there. Now you're gonna place a little bit of, uh, so you put a little tiny bit of shortening into the vegetable fat in the bottom of the mold. And you take your paste here, and I'm just gonna press that in with my finger. All right, so you just, so this doesn't fill the mold up. You see it's quite, it's just really in the bottom of the mold. So um, so then you're going to roll into, and place in the base of the cavity and press, in, press into the paste. And then you're going to then, what we're gonna do is take in your little uh, wire, we're going to now, with the wire, take your glue, obviously for air drying clay or PVA glue, your flexi glue or your egg white, and just put that onto the little hook here. All right, and then we're gonna put that into, now remember this is a soft wire, so you're gonna place that into the, now when you position it into the center, it's the, the wire, the vertical wire that's more important, all right, to make sure that that's sort of in the center of the little kayak shape, all right? So you put that in, and then what I do is you're just going to flex the mold around the paste, all right? Now it won't, com might, won't might not completely cover the wire, don't worry about that, but just as I said, just press it around there like that, all right? So then when you come out, you see you have your little T-hook there, and just wanna make sure that it's a little bit pointed on the ends there, like that, all right? And that's how you do the center. So when you put it in the mold, by pressing it, what it's gonna do is gonna push the uh, paste around the wire. Now, you can stand those in your styrofoam, we'll put them on a little block. So we're going to just show you another one of those. So remember, take that. So you roll it into a sort of little sausage and then I put a little pressure on one end and a little pressure on the other end. So what you're doing is when you, you're rolling an angle and with your finger and your finger there, and that wants to be like a little cigar shape. All right, so you're gonna put this into the mold. 
and then you're just going to press it in with your finger and then we're going to put a little bit of glue onto the wire here remember when this goes into the paste hold it quite close to the bottom because if not the wire will and then as I said you just want to sort of position that into the center so it sits in there like that and then you're just going to take your mold and just going to flex the paste around the mold all right and then you just make that a little pointed on the two ends and that will be your little stamen all right I'll just show you one more of those and then you're just going to continue with the all six of those. Remember, you know, if you're, especially if you're using traditional um, flour paste or gum paste, you know, you can take a little tiny bit of shortening each time, but also if you're using traditional paste, I would work some vegetable fat or shortening into the paste before you roll it into your sausage. Obviously, if you're using air drying clay or flexi paste, they don't sort of dry out as quickly. But so you see, you're gonna make a little sausage and to place this into your mold. I just found my finger is enough because I don't want to use like a cosmetic sponge or things because it almost will flatten it too much, all right? And then you're gonna take your glue here, just put a little bit of glue. So edible glue, egg white, flexi glue, depending on what medium you're using. And then you're gonna put, the, put that into, the, into there. Remember, make sure that the wire is like is sitting in the middle of like the little boat shape, all right? Because you're, you may, your hook might be a little bit sort of off the T hook, so that doesn't matter. But the important thing is, is that that's going to be in the middle. And you see the little bit of vegetable fat will help to shorten it, will help to stay, keep that stable in the mold. And then you're just going to flex the, that, press the paste around the mold and take that out. Make that a little bit pointed. And that will be your little stamen, all right? So I'm just going to continue the remaining three of those and I'll be right back. So here we have our completed 12 stamens. Now we don't need these to uh, part two. Uh, so you're just going to either leave those on a styrofoam block or you can just lay them on a piece of foam. And obviously they can just dry until uh, the second part where I'm going to show you how to color those. So next we're going to move on to the pistol, which is the center part of the stamen centers. So now we're going to move on to the pistol, which is the center part. So we have the six stamens and then we have the pistol. So just like on a lily. Um, so this is quite small and this is going to sit into the middle. Remember, this is going to now be made in white. And of course, then it will dust it this red color to tie in with the color of the amaryllis. Now in your um, checklist, all right, we have the checklist is one 26 gauge wire. And uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take uh, the, the full width, full length, um, obviously 26 gauge wire, cover with quarter width white floral tape. So again, just exactly the same technique. So we're gonna cover from top to bottom. Remember we use quarter width tape as well, so it just adds too much bulk to this as well. So this is on a 26 wire. Now sometimes it doesn't matter about color or wire, but uh, in this case you want to use white. Again, so you're just gonna cut the ends off with like kitchen or school scissors, or as I said, you can use wire cutters. And then you're going to just cut that approximately in half. All right, and this will be enough for the, obviously the two, the two uh, pistol. So now we're going to take a number three ball of white and cut into two. All right, so we're going to take a number three ball of white. So this is the only white you need. So just a number three ball, one third below, two thirds above. Again, just to condition that. And then you're gonna just roll that into a sausage. I'm just gonna cut that in half. And this will be enough then for the two, two centers, all right? So then we're gonna take, take this and you're gonna brush glue on the end of the wire, insert into the ball and mold to a 10 millimeter uh, long uh, sausage, all right? So here, you're gonna brush a little bit of glue onto the end of the, the wire here, just about 10 millimeters down. And then you can, we don't have any hook or anything on here. Just gonna put the wire, so the wire pretty much goes to the end. 
and then you're going to just stretch the piece a little bit past the end of the wire so the wire is actually about here and you're going to make that to about 10 10 millimeters so the wire you can see is not quite half but you see the sort of the top part doesn't have any wire in it and this wants to be about 10 millimeters approximately 10 millimeters long all right and then you're going to so you cut cut the top into thirds approximately five millimeters long all right so here we're going to so you're going to use your scissors all right so we use this technique before on quite a few flowers so what you're going to do is you're going to just going to cut in with the scissors so you're going to cut about halfway about five millimeters so that will be like the third so that's with the scissors on their side all right so the scissors will be on their side and then you then the the bottom part which is here you're going to have the scissors then vertical and you're going to cut that in here all right so you're going to make one cut so basically with the you're going to make the cut first cut like that all right about a third of the way down obviously my fingers are sausage and then the second cut you cut the bottom part in two all right so when you open this up this will give you the the sort of this little center so we use this technique on quite a few flowers like uh, you can use this on freesias and flowers like that all right and then you're just gonna uh, make that and just make sure the bottom part here you just sort of really almost just sort of work that so it work because when we dust this you want this to be sort of almost like a gradual uh, end part there all right and you can but as i said just just almost work that onto the wire so we'll look like it's part of the wire okay it's not like a big lump there and uh, that will be the center all right so you're going to make two of those and that will be the center of the um, amaryllis so first we need to make the template the pattern all right so this is in your download so just trace that off obviously i put this onto like a plastic taste mat a piece of um, acetate or obviously you can use like a margarine container or something plastic um, or as i said you can use it on just a thick card anyway so just trace that on and then obviously cut round so we have the pattern there for our amaryllis and remember you can just obviously mark that or you can put in a little bag marked with amaryllis template all right so um this is what we're going to do then we need to have your paste now the paste we have uh, in your download obviously checklist we have 40 grams or a number 15 a red this is red poppy red flexi paste or obviously could you red pre-colored um, flower paste gum paste or obviously color it yourself and then with the air drying clay we're using a number 16 size so you can see the air drying clay is pretty much the same color as the poppy red um, flexi paste all right and uh, of course some amary amaryllis could be a darker red or a lighter red so you could lighten this but we're just using the red uh, straight out of the pack this is the hardy red uh, clay and uh, I made a little bit bigger ball of uh, paste because when we put this through the pasta machine with the hardy clay we'll go number three for um, the flower paste flexi paste gum paste we use number four all right so remember sometimes there are slight changes to the air drying clay size wise in the size guide is the same but when you're sometimes using doing petals or things on wires you might go a little bit thicker all right so that's our paste so what we're going to do is uh, in the instructions it says take half of the red paste roll out number four on pasta machine obviously number three for the air drying clay and cut out three petal shapes using the template so I'm going to show you that now, uh, preparing the paste and rolling out through the pasta machine. So I've rolled out my paste. Remember, it wants to be um, the length of what you need, but obviously the pasta machine will make it longer. Remember, if you have any little air bubbles, you can go in with uh, your acupuncture needle, because especially on air drying clay. And um, then remember, if you're using air drying clay, that needs to go now in a plastic uh, little page protector all right remember put it towards the bottom because when it goes through the pasta machine it's going to push you up towards the top all right uh, sugar is not necessary but as i said when you're working with air drying clay so it doesn't stick to the rollers so now we're going to go through the pasta machine on number four and ready to cut this out so i've got this set on number four so remember put it on speed number four and this will just go through the pasta machine when you're using the plastic flap, feel it, feed it through and then just pull from the bottom because being plastic, it will sort of not really have any traction. So just pull the plastic flap down. So now we're going to cut out three of the shapes. Just cut off the bottom. Now 
Now with your air drying clay, the reason we have gone a little bit thicker because of shrinkage, but also it's a little bit more difficult to thread the wires into air drying clay. So that's why I've gone a little bit thicker on the air drying clay. So just going to cut around here. Just going to peel away the excess paste. And then we'll put this into our stay fresh folder. So this is going to go into the the third one. If you have any little imperfections on the edge, you can just use your little knife. Now remember, you can use like a, a scalpel exacto knife, but you need to use a self-healing board for that, all right? I'm just using a little cutting wheel, which is like a miniature pizza cutter. This is really good for cutting out paste. All right, now we're gonna put this back into the bag. Now we're gonna do three petals um, at a time, all right? So we're gonna do the three petals so in your um, obviously supply what we need in the checklist, we have six uh, 26 gauge white wires, third length, all right? So basically cut two full length wires into three. Now we're only gonna wire the inside petals of the amaryllis. So we're actually just gonna make the three wired petals um, in this first part. And then in the second part, we will actually uh, dust the center stamens and the pistol, dust the petals, assemble them, and then the three outside petals are actually attached with no wires. This is a technique I use for trumpet flowers as well. So other flowers that are similar to this would be like Easter lilies, the longer florum, St. Joseph lily, and also when I do, for example, things like open tulips. So this technique we use in quite a few different flowers. Um, so we're only making the first three petals, which will be the inside ones, which are going to be wired. Now, um, so we're gonna use two uh, products, two Flower Pro products. So we're going to use the actual lily. All right, this is gonna give us the the sort of the central vein. You can see this is very much like an amaryllis petal. So this is gonna give us the characteristic sort of central vein like you have on a lily or an amaryllis. And then we're gonna be swapping out and then we're gonna be putting it into the large, the extra large uh, peony. And that's gonna give you actually like the veining on the outside, all right? Now for this, we need, um, we need a, you can either use a cosmetic wedge, all right, or you can use a cosmetic sponge, all right? And what we're gonna do, a cosmetic sponge is approximately um, about there. So you're gonna, here you've got the cosmetic sponge here. This is about eight millimeters wide, all right? Or the other alternative is you can actually just take your, um, your wedge and just cut off a piece about eight millimeters wide, all right? Um, but if you have some cosmetic sponges, and also like if you have some that got a little bit stained, it doesn't have to be, obviously it could be a little bit colored or whatever, misshapen. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna cut that across there, all right? And then this is the width, we got this is eight millimeters here, so I'm just gonna cut that to make almost like a little foam French fry, all right? Or as I said, if you're using a cosmetic a wedge, you can just cut approximately an eight millimeter wide piece there. All right, because this is gonna be used for, when we put the paste in, we're gonna use that to actually press just onto that central vein, all right? So as I said, we need about an eight millimeter width, all right? And that's what we're gonna use. Now, so uh, we're gonna go on to the pedals. I'm gonna show you a couple of these, all right? So now remember, so we're now gonna take your pedal so you can take the pedal here and um, you can either remember, as I said, put this onto the edge of the pad and insert the wire onto the edge of the pad or obviously you can, you can do this in your thumb and finger. I'll show you both, all right? So you dip your wire into um, glue or into, and this is gonna go into about 25 millimeters or one inch into the bottom, all right? So you can hold that. Now remember, you wanna feel it tickle your finger it wants to go in about, approximately about 25 millimeters or one inch. All right, you're gonna just pinch that around the bottom, so you're just securing that. So you're just pinching it around the bottom so you get like a tapered effect, all right? Now this is when we're gonna go on to, um, so remember if you're reading, just cover that with a container. So then you're going to, um, once we've done that, 
you're going to lay in the large petal cavity and press only on the center with a half a cosmetic sponge or cut down wedge eight millimeters wide, all right? So I'm just gonna place this onto here. Now this is gonna sit into the large, and you see this is actually will fit directly into the bottom of that. So I made this pattern to fit this mold, all right? So that will go into the bottom of the mold there. All right, and then, so as I said, taking your wedge, your part of your wedge or part of, you're gonna just press that. So you see how I'm just pressing that in with my, so you see what I'm doing is I'm sort of creating that sort of central vein. And then with your companion tool, you place the companion tool there and just gonna press that into there as well, all right? So we're only pressing in the sort of the middle area there, all right? And uh, so you get that effect. And um, then you're going to remove from the mold and lay into the peony cavity, the extra large peony cavity. So take this off. So you see how you've just got those, those ra raised ridges, or it's mainly the central one, but you've got the three ridges onto there. Now, the reason you don't want to press because we don't want those little like raised parts on there. And if you do get a couple of those, it's not gonna notice on there. So if you get a couple of little dots on there, it won't notice. But as I said, then we're gonna go onto the peony. All right, so this is gonna go into the peony. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to prefer to first of all press just the tip, all right? So you see, cause this is a little bit longer than the actual peony, all right? So using your cosmetic sponge, you can use a square edge or obviously the square edge of your, your wedge. So you're just gonna press that just on that, that tip, all right? Just a little tiny tip there. And then you put it into the vena here like that. And again, you're going to press with your cosmetic sponge. So you see you're outside of where you can see those three lines are. So you see, you're just gonna press onto here. Remember this is the, the back we have towards us. All right, so you just press. So if you're using your wedge, you just press on there like that and just press on there like that. I can show you a couple of times, all right? So remember that's, so you're just pressing where you can see those three lines, one, two, three. You're pressing outside those, okay? Um, once we've done that, um, then you're going to, um, one, once you've done that, move down and uh, onto tip, then move down so the petal is in the base, press around the side, using a square edge of cosmetic sponge on the back of the petal. Now we're gonna place the peony back vein in position and press gently around the edge only. So this is our, this is our uh, peony here. All right, so you're just gonna just position that. All right, and you're just gonna you're just gonna press just around the edge. All right, just you don't need a you need a fairly subtle veining on the back, but don't press in this area here. It's just around the edge. All right, so that gives you a veining. And then what you will do is uh, take this off, and then um, then you place on the soft side of the pad, make some lines. So then you're gonna place peony back vein in position, press gently around the edge, place on the soft side of the pad, and make some lines on the tip of the back. So what we're then gonna do is just gonna use your companion tool. So just where that, the top is, just make some lines, because when you put the back vein on there, you don't want to press too hard on the top, it's just really around the edge, all right? So just make some little lines onto there. Now then we're going to, then you're gonna fill the top half of the pedal, all right? So you can use a balling tool. Obviously, if this was air drying clay, um, you can use your uh, companion tool. So then you're gonna just sort of soften around the top half back and forth. Or obviously you can use a metal balling tool. Now remember with a metal balling tool there, you're gonna use for air drying clay, you would use a rolling back and forward technique like this with air drying clay, all right? With a metal balling tool. Because remember, plastic will stick. Or obviously if you're doing this with sugar, which I am, we're just gonna go around the edge there, but just on the top half of the pedal. All right, so just, I'm using a medium balling tool. Um, this is like the FMM medium one. Um, that's actually about number four on your size guide, all right? To give you an idea of the size ball I'm using if you're using a different brand or a metal one, all right? And uh, remember like when we do roses, we use like a larger one, which, cause you want more of a softening, but here we're actually making almost like little frills like you would also on a lily. And then you're going to, so the turnover, redefine the main lines. So you redefine these main lines. So with your companion tool, you can just just go like where the, the side lines, you see this is the main, you're just gonna go where defining those 
lines on the side, just sort of gently. So you get almost like three lines on the, the central one and then one each side, okay? And then you're going to hollow the base on the front using shaft of the companion tool and pinch to a point. So you bring this off the edge, you're going to hollow that around the shaft of your companion tool. You're gonna to pinch that to a point, just a slight point on the end. And then we're gonna put this to dry. Now we're going to, um, we're going to place to dry in a multi-former or foil formed over a medium pin or wooden spoon handle. All right, so I'll just show you, first of all, we've used this before. I've already got three of these ready for the next step. But anyway, you're going to put this into a multi-former. This, remember, is like an ice tube tray. So this will dry in a slight taco shape. And then the tip wants to just come over like this. So you'll get the shape of the petals. We've used this before for other components, all right? So that's if you have, for example, a former like this, you can get these in plastic and in silicone as well, all right, um, online. And then an alternative would be to use a foil sheet, which again, I've shown this technique before. So what you would do there is you would use a foil sheet. I'm just gonna move this out the way. And you would use like a medium pin or for example like a, a wooden spoon handle and that's approximately the size you want all right um, and uh, as i said that's going to be used so what you do you're going to form the foil over here now because we're going to be doing uh, three petals and then another three petals you can make six cavities here So you can just go over this, or as I said, the wooden spoon handle. And then what I do, so you see this gives the same sort of shape, then I just take, just fold the end over. So fold the end over like that, and then just sort of reshape that. And then you're gonna, again, so when it goes into here, it will just go in the same way, and you see the end will just curl over the top, all right? So the foil, you know, foil is what I started using, and then obviously I found the, the ice tube when obviously water bottles were invented for water, then obviously they made the, uh, the tubes to go in the water bottles, the ice tubes. So as I said, that's sort of uh, how I would dry, how I would dry that. All right, and so that would be your three. Now those are gonna be the three more closed up flowers. So those will be, obviously when they're put together, these ones are dry. You see these will, be, these will form the first three petals of the so this this amaryllis is going to be a little bit more closed up you see it will be like that and then we'll have the three outside petals on all right now then uh you're going to then we'll repeat with the obviously more open one i'm going to show you one of these ones again just to go through the steps of that so so you can see that so remember as i said you can either when you take the petal out Remember, if you do get an air bubble, which is sort of, if you get little air bubbles in paste occasionally, just use, you use an acupuncture needle and the acupuncture needle will obviously get through, through that. All right, so remember, as I said, you can do it on the pad, which is really the way I recommend to most of my students. You know, if I'm, when you, generally when you have a petal or a leaf that is bigger than your sort of fingers, it's usually easier to put it on a pad. But the other alternative is obviously hold it between your thumb and first finger. And so we're going to take your wire, dip the wire into the glue, and then you're going to take this. Then we want to, this wants to go into the pedal, all right? So it wants to go in about an inch into the pedal, just at the top. You want to feel the tick of your finger. So I'm just, just going to get in there. So you want to feel it tickle your finger. And you can also um, do that with your, if you put your little flexi scraper on the top. But I usually use, use my finger and you feel it to like tickle your finger. It wants to go in about 25 millimeters or about an inch, all right? Now remember with the air drying clay, you've got a little bit of extra thickness there. So it's a little bit easier to get that in. All right, so you're gonna, that will be the first step. Now remember this first stage is gonna be on the large lily. So you're gonna really pull it into the bottom of the lily former, make sure the wire is straight. And then you're going to just use your, now you can even take the, you know, when you cut the, the, 
cosmetic sponge in half. You can even just take it like that if you don't want to cut it down and then you can press on there. But I found it's a little bit easier to almost make like a, a foam French fry. And then you're going to get that just, just into the middle there, you see? And then you're going to just use your cosmetic sponge. You see I'm using the shaft, a cosmetic um, sponge, and then you're going to take your companion tool, press into there like that, you see? So this is on the back, and then when you take this out, obviously you're going to get those raised ridges on the pedals. So remember, first thing you're going to do is turn this over, so you're going to put it into the, obviously this is into the extra large. So remember first, we're going to just press on the tip. All right, so you do that first, press that on the tip, and then you're going to then bring it up and into the bottom of the former. All right, make sure that's sort of in the center there. And then you're going to use your cosmetic sponge so you see each side of those, so really you're leaving that, almost that sort of number, a eight millimeter thickness, uh, you're going each side of that. Because you don't want to sort of lose that main defined vein in the center. All right, now remember here, now see this is obviously comes up into the vein a little bit, so that's why you, when you position this, you don't press on the top, you only press in on the sides. All right, so you just press a little bit on the side there not in the center, so that will give you the vein in. Then you're going to take this onto your pad. All right, now just use your companion tool, so just to emphasize this vein in on the top. All right, and then we're going to take the, so remember back and forth here, so you're just really sort of ruffling, so you're going to get this frill in. Remember, half on and half off the edge, all right? But remember, with air drying clay, you use your balling tool, all right? And But what you're going to have to do is you have to use more of a rolling, so you're actually letting the ball roll. Because if you do that, it will just tear the air drying clay. Or alternatively, you can use, obviously, a companion tool, and you can just work your pedal like this with air drying clay or with sugar, all right? Remember, do that at an angle like this. All right, so you just do that on the top half. Now, the re this is also very important. The reason why you only sort of soften the top half or slightly frill it is because when you put this together, if it's frilled all the way down to the bottom, it's very difficult to put the outside petals on. And also um, the lily family, the trumpet lily, which amaryllis is similar, obviously um, it has that cone shape. So you don't want to frill it all the way down like you would a plastic lily. All right, so that's gonna, then you turn it over till on the front. And then just using your companion tool, you just gently redefine. You lost the veins a little bit. You're just redefining that almost veining. So you see you get the sort of the, the sort of classic shape of the veining in the middle. So they almost come together. You see really what you're doing. You see you can see the shape here. You've got the bigger, thicker lateral vein and then the two side ones. So you're just going to go each side of those to redefine that. All right. And uh, Remember, you're going to make a slight point on the end, and then you're going to hollow around the shaft of your companion tool. And then just put that into the, the former like this. All right, so that just sort of sits. So the top just comes over the top of those slightly. Obviously, these ones are dry, so they're wanting to come off. There we are. All right, so you make three of those, okay? And then once you've made three of those, you would just uh, repeat the process again, all right? So what you're then going to do is you can take and the other half of the paste. So obviously you can take the other half of the paste, re-roll that out, and then you'll cut three more of those, all right? I'm just going to show you one of these because it's made in exactly the same way. It's just going to be uh, the way it's actually put in the former is a little bit different. So then you do the next three. And I would suggest doing three and then doing another three rather than cutting out six of them, just so you don't get confused. All right. But remember, as I said, you're going to put your little bit of glue on there. And you can, if you're going to use your finger method, just use a little bit of corn flour, corn starch, and you can just thread the wire into the paste. All right. So you're just going to thread the wire so you get that thickness. And you just start to thread that in. So it goes in about an inch, pinch around the bottom. 
All right. So then we're going to then now move on to exactly the same technique. All right. So just turn this over. Now, if your wire is a little bit visible, you can just sort of push the paste so that will just uh, accommodate, make sure the wire is in the bottom there, and that should see it. As you can see, it sits with a pattern. It sits directly into the base of the former like this, all right? Okay, so then you're going to take your little cosmetic strip. Just push that down the middle so it goes all the way down the center. Then you're going to take your companion tool, just position that. All right, just make sure that emphasizes it. When you take this off, you know, just check that it looks okay. If it's not defined enough, you can just put it, because it will slot back in very, very easily. All right, so if you have an area there you didn't get, you can just uh, repress that in if you needed to. All right, so before you take it out, then what you're going to do is, uh, then you're going to take your, now we're going to go on to the extra large peony. All right, so check that the veins look okay on that and then you're going to lay that into the extra large. You're going to first of all just vein the tip. So remember that I have to come over to the bottom just to, on the tip. And then you're going to bring it into the base of the former. And using your square edge of your cosmetic sponge or your Press that onto there. Take the peony back veiner. All right, so there's going to be a vein in. Then you're just going to place it onto the soft side of your pad. Just continue those lines to the top because they're obviously in the. And then you're going to take your medium balling tool or companion tool going to ruffle the top half of the pedal. Remember, you usually do that the side that's away from me. Now at this stage with your air drying clay, because your air drying clay is a little bit thicker, if you need to sort of do that just gently to almost thin the edge a little bit and then use your balling tool, but because the air drying clay you're using a totally different technique of using the companion tool or a metal balling tool, that will flatten it out anyway. All right, because remember your air drying clay will be a little bit obviously thicker on the edge. And remember when it shrinks, because it's about an eight to 10% shrinkage, that will obviously just disappear. Turn it over, just redefine those side lines. All right, so you see you got a nice natural look there for the veining. You're gonna hollow that around. You're gonna just pinch that to a slight point on the top there. If you have any little tiny areas that are a little bit rough, you can just use your scissors. We'll just smooth that with your finger, all right? And um, then what we're gonna do is gonna put this in the former. Now this one is a little tiny bit different, all right? You're using the same foil former or the same former. And then what I've, what I've done here, just take these, these ones off. You're gonna put, um, this is a jumbo drinking straw, all right? This is a jumbo drinking straw. And, or you can use, uh, for example, so these come in different sizes, you know, different, uh, this is a clear one, this is obviously, you can also use a foam, this is a fun foam um, noodle, all right, you can use something like that. But generally, the, uh, these are really easy to find in Asian grocery stores or online, all right, and so you're gonna put the, you're gonna put that on the edge, the edge. And then what I've done here is I'm just gonna put a couple of pieces, and of course, this can fit the other three, can go in here. Now, when you do this, of course, you can you can have your uh, former like this, and then what you can do is you can put this, obviously, so these these three, and usually you can just like almost top and tail those first three, like that. All right, and then you can do so they will sit here like this. All right, and then what you do is with these these three, you just put these on to the former. So I've raised this up on some foam. You put this onto, onto here. So they actually want to almost curl around the top. You see how they, so just put the straw here and then you're going to put them into the former here. So obviously when they're soft, this is easy to do. You put this into the former here and then this one, you curl this sort of the, the edge of 
round a little bit so you see it's round there it's round so you can see the difference between the one is so this is more straight and then this one is going to be slightly more curled all right and uh, so that would be sort of how you would uh, dry those all right so they actually just so the end of them is going to have a sort of almost like a curl on the end of it all right and so that means uh, when you have got the three of those completed all right they will just curl so when we put these together I'm just going to move this out of the way so I'm just showing you. So this one, this one will represent a flower that's going to be a little bit more open. All right. So you see this one. So these, these, these three petals. Obviously these are dry, but you see how this is going to be a more of an open one. But you see how the petals curl back. Whereas you see the first ones, if I put that beside it, you see they're a little bit more straight. All right. And so you see they're a little bit more straight and then these ones are going to be a little bit more curled back. All right. They just sort of will look natural because the two of the amaryllis are going to sit together with the amaryllis bud. So we want them to look like a little bit more open this one and then one will be a little bit more closed. Now those are just going to dry. Um, so you can just dry those. Obviously air dry them or put them in a food dehydrator. We don't need these for the second part, but if you're going to do both parts sort of uh, one day and the next day, of course you could, uh, you could dry these in a food dehydrator. But uh, as I say, once they're dry, you can stand them up or just lay them on some foam ready for the next stage. So this is our amaryllis, uh, the inside petals, all right? And uh, remember, we're gonna make just three petals for each flower. And then once they're dried and colored in the second part, we're going to obviously tape these, color them, assemble them with the stamens, and then we'll make the outside petals in the same way as we've just done, except they won't have any wire in them. And they will be attached to the outside. So they will be actually attached to the outside of the flower and they will be glued and they will just be attached to the outside here, just like we do when we do, as I said, a trumpet lily or um, things like parrot tulips. So now for the bud, we're going to uh, take a half length 20 gauge wire, make a 25 millimeter one inch open hook on the end. All right, so generally I just measure that with my fingers about 25 millimeters, about one inch. And I'm just using my fingers, all right, because I want more of an, more of an open, like one bit like a shepherd's crook shape, right? So more of an open hook, just like we do lily buds. And then you're gonna just take your half width light green floral tape, and you're just gonna catch where the sort of top of the crook comes over to meet the main wire, just gonna catch that and just come down about halfway down, okay? So that's gonna be the, the hook. Now we're just making one of these buds, all right? Now then we're going to, in your checklist, um, it says we need uh, 16 grams or two number 11s of white paste and then a number one seven small of foliage green. In air drying clay, you'd use obviously two number 11s of white and then a number seven small of lime green or foliage green, custom or even just a little bit of green. You may also have things from other projects like from the um, autumn project as well that you could just use. We're just making like a pale green color um, to make the bud. We just need a sort of a pale green color so you know you could also just use uh, and some other paste you have as I said if you've got projects from the uh, as I said autumn uh, project left from air drying clay you can just do that and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit lighter or darker so two number 11s of white and a number seven small of green all right so um, so you're just going to mix this together obviously this is just going to be mixed together This is going to give us a little bit, a um, little tiny bit over. So we will actually have about seven small over in theory, and that will be what we're going to be using for the like a little calyx part on this. So just going to mix this through. So this is going to make this pale, pale green. And then you're going to, once you've got this pale green, and this is going to this be dusted with green and a little bit of red. So then you're going to measure off. So we need a number. 11 size. Now remember there's going to be a little bit of extra paste here when we when we use the flexi scraper. Okay so don't worry too much you can just also just take half of the paste and use that because you're going to be using a flexi scraper and getting rid of extra like we do on pine cones and things. So there's a little bit a tiny bit more than we need. Now we're going to use the medium size um, bud mold, all right? 
and um, obviously we're going to be making one side and then directly make the second half because we're actually going to form this into a shape and I reference like almost like the shape of the uh, cymbidium bud it's going to have a slight you know point on it like a beak when you see you've actually mis uh, forming this uh, into a slightly different shape so that is why we would make both halves at the same time and of course this will be the same for air drying clay which you have to do because of obviously shrinkage so we're going to take a little bit of the shortening, put the fat into the mold, just a little tiny bit, remember minimal amount. And then you're going to take the paste here, I'm going to roll that into a little sausage. Okay, so you can choose that and use your flexi scraper. You can just have, if you've got a little bit of extra paste, you can just come off the bottom. And that's why I said you could just take half of that paste to, because then any extra, you're just going to come off the bottom. And then take a little bit of glue here, put onto your hook. All right, and this is gonna go into at an angle. So you're gonna go in at an angle and then you're gonna go in an angle and then skim under the surface, all right? So just skim under the surface. And like that. Just use your scraper. You know, now having a flexi scraper, this is really useful when you're making pine cones and things just to make sure the top. And then you're just gonna take, take that out of the mold. All right, and then what you're going to do is just going to repeat the process again. Going to make it into another sausage. All right, so see, so just going to use. So you can use your cosmetic sponge as well. And then, as I said, in the excess paste you have there, you're going to just. Just use a sawing action. Just use your sawing action. So in theory, you actually have about a number seven small left over. Okay, and we just use that, um, as I said, um, the end part of this. Now, going to put some glue. Now remember, especially with air drying clay, make sure you really almost brush the glue actually onto the edge of the mold as well, because you want to make sure they're really, as I said, is stuck because when the uh, clay starts to shrink, it will come and you'll get little gaps, which you can fill in with softened air drying clay and then just a wet finger as well. And then you're gonna just position this on the top. All right, just gently go onto there. Come out of the mold. You can use a little bit of corn flour, corn starch on your fingers. All right, now, so once you've got the sort of the two halves together, so as you can see, what we're gonna do is it wants to be a sort of a little bit um, sort of more pointed and then more of like a beak shape. So you're just gonna use a little bit of corn starch on your finger. So you're just gonna make it like a little bit pointed. All right, and uh, you can see here the um, where you've got the sort of the, the shape of that. So then you're going to just sort of bring that over. So I'm actually, I'm ha having the seam. So the sort of seam is at the top, is a top here. So this is where the seam is because it's sort of obviously, it's a little bit wider than it is width wise. So you're just, where the seam is there, you're just going to fold that over like a slight beak. All right, so you're just going to bend that over to a slight, like a slight beak shape. You can just use your fingers. And so you just get that slight, you see how it's just like a slight, slight beak shape, all right? So that would be the shape of the buds. And um, then with this, you want to sort of hang that. So you just uh, hang it in your food dehydrator if you wanted to, or obviously hang that um, uh, on your drying rack and obviously just leave that to dry um, for uh, until it uh, is, uh, Dry. Now, of course, we also, um, when we make buds, a lot of times we will use 50-50 paste. So you also could actually use 
um, instead of using flour or gum paste, you could actually take, like we did um, when we did the bull rush and some other projects, you could take two number 11s, could be white sugar paste or fondant, and then the number seven green, because they will dry. And if you're gonna do them with the two parts as one week between them, that would mean they have plenty of time to dry, all right? I'm just showing you obviously doing everything in flexi paste or uh, flour paste or gum paste, all right? So that would be, um, that would be the bud. And um, so as I said, it's best to let that hang. So you hang that on the hanging rack and, and that will be your bud, all right? And uh, so that will be the last component here of part one. So this is the um, part one, all right? So we started off by making 12 stamens, identical. Then we move on to two pistols. Then we made three wired petals, which remember are going to be the sort of more of the closed up amaryllis. So you just sort of have the ends curling slightly. And then three that are going to curl a little bit more back using a, pool, a foam noodle or obviously like a bubble tea straw. And then finally we finish off with the buds. So these are obviously all dry, um, but just obviously leave them on the formers for a few hours. And then of course you can take them off and hang them or lay them on foam ready for the second part. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of the amaryllis and uh, get all of the components ready and I will see you in part two. Sweet wishes, bye!